The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 16th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered there. You can always send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a sea of green out there. All the U.S. sectors inside the S&P 500, all the U.S. indices that we track, trading to the upside. Dow's up 403, S&P's 55, NASDAQ 100, 197, Russell's up 26, semis are up 58, trading's up 462. The smallest move so far is about one and two tenths percent, and that's coming from the Dow up 400 points. Gold is off seven bucks. Silver's down eight cents. Slice be crude off 65 pennies. Natural gas down 16 cents. 30 treasury down one point and four ticks. He's printed out at 111.20. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. You've got Lululemon, 35 bucks, 9%. Broadcom, 2%, 20 bucks. Old Dominion, 18 bucks, four and six tenths percent. MicroStrategy, nearly 5% or 15 bucks. United Rental, 3%, about a 13 point move. To the downside, it's Vista Outdoor. It's back behind the back behind the shed. It's been taking the shed. It's down 24 percent, nearly an eight dollar move on to innovation. It's on to lower prices, down four percent, off five dollars in change. Moderna down five dollars in change, about six percent. Ambrex Phar uh, Biopharma down 38 percent. That's a five dollar move there. Bionitech is down about four and a half percent. 450 to the downside there. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Where do we want to begin? I'll tell you, we're going to begin with actually our first question. This came in from Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. Mr. Bill wanted to take a look at the seasonality of the S&P 500. So we got a number of different charts that you and I can take a look at. This is the longest term chart that we've got. And this is a 95-year chart out here. The 95-year chart suggests that the S&P 500, on average, makes its seasonal low right around the end of October out there. Those of you that used to follow my work when I had put together a chart for the Dow like this was 100 and some odd years. Uh, the average came in right around the middle of October. So we know from about this point forward, a few days back, we don't use these necessarily to the day, uh, is when a significant bottom typically forms inside the S&P 500. Some might say, and I could argue, that that bottom already occurred. We can go take a look at that inside the ES Mini. In fact, I'm sure we will do that. Last week or two weeks ago, we had a confirmed Gartley buy pattern on the weekly base for the S&P 500. So there's a possibility that uh, the low is in and that the markets move higher into the end of the year. That's what the 95-year cycle would suggest that we do. Now, we've got, we can put as many years or as few years as we want on here. I'm just going to go with the defaults. Here's a 25-year time period. The 25-year time period says that we typically form a bottom around October 9th. Inside of the ES Mini, for those of you that follow along with the uh, show, uh, what we know about the ES Mini is that it formed a uh, buy the D point pattern. It did it on October the 4th. 
So if we come back here, Mr. Bill, we take a look at it. This is October the 9th when a bottom typically comes in. This is over the last 25 years, and the market just continues to move higher. We can shorten this up just a tad. We've got a 15-year schedule. 15-year schedule calls for a bottom around October 2nd. Again, we've got that one on October 4th for the ES Mini out there, and then a move higher. We can shorten it up just a tad more. I don't want to get beyond uh, 10 years out here, but here's the 10-year program. Now, let's go all the way back to the 95. So that's one set of charts out here. It's only the 95 year that suggests that we don't get a bottom till the end of this month out there. That may or may not be true out here. Um, but this is the 95 year cycle. Now, the nice thing about the 95 year cycle is we can really take a look at where we're at in relationship to our pre-election year, which is what we're at. If we take a look at our pre-election year at this stage here, we can see that typically we don't bottom at all. In fact, we make a high right around the end of July, middle of July, end of July. When did the ES Mini on a weekly basis form its top out there? Well, I can tell you on a daily basis. When did it form its top? July 27th, July 27th, uh, and it was actually uh, August 1st as well, where we had that confirmed road momentum indicator top out there. So if you come all the way back here to the 95-year cycle, what this tells us here, Mr. Bill, is that the markets, yeah, we get this running around and rallying, but uh, if you take a look at it, we should be headed lower into the end of our mid-December out there before there's any kind of relief, right around December the 17th. Now, that's a 95-year cycle, has more data points than what we can show you in a 25-year cycle. But here's a 25-year cycle. Here are the election years. So we've only got two, four, six um, uh, data points to observe. But now on this six data points out here, this shows a bottom right around October 3rd. We know the ES Mini formed a bottom on October 4th, and this suggests price moving up. So the question is, which one is it? Which of the patterns, which of the analogs is the S&P 500 following? I provided you with uh, all the information that I can here. Does anybody have a clue as to which of these two patterns, the S&P, doesn't have to be two, I showed you more than two, is following along? We're going to know the answer, certainly by the end of the year as we continue to monitor it. But, Mr. Bill, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for inside of the ES Mini or the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at those charts here before we go to break. That way you can follow along with regard to what I said the highs came in when the lows came in. So let's just change our windows here, get to those white background charts. And uh, here you'll see on the bottom portion of the chart, you'll see the A to B equals CD to the downside. Here on the uh, weekly chart for the ES Mini, two weeks ago we had that bullish hammer candle. Last week we had a bullish engulfing candle. The issue here is really that 4424 level. That's the bottom of its profile. It was tested and rejected last week. Price is unable to take that out. Yeah, we've got a really more of a neutral signal out here. But if price can take that out, we should see move to 4475 on the daily time frame. If we open up this chart, here's that July high that we were talking about. Here's that confirmation of it on August the 1st. And then here is that buy the D point bottom pattern. That buy the D point bottom pattern actually completed well right here on October the uh, 4th out there so those are the tops and the bottoms the question is and right now we've got that uh, top of that daily profile up at the 44 30 level for the S&P 500. So I hope that that did provide you that insight. And if we take a look at the NQ real quickly here before we do go to break, the NQ, no top that we have in place, beautiful TD9 count bottom. And price on Friday, as well as today, pulling back and testing support of that 15093 level. If price closed below that, we'd be looking at a move down to 14676. Otherwise, we should target 15469. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Still got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. Let's get to our first request coming in from Coda inside the Tiger's Den. And Coda would like to take a look at Netflix. So what do we know about Netflix? Right now, let's take a look at it. Uh, looks like you've got wave seven. I've got wave seven uh, of a uh, bottom potential out here. That'll be confirmed if we don't see a lower low today. When I mean a lower low, I'm referring to a lower low based on last Friday's low, and that's at 352.05. So if we don't get... A push down below that, you've got a wave seven bottom. Now, what price should do here, Coda, when we get bottom patterns, is price should make its way up to its oscillator and change line. That also happens to be near where the bottom of its new profile has formed. That's up at the 360, 305-ish area out there. So you should see a move there. Now, typically, when you have a profile that forms above price, which is what we have here in Netflix, that tells us about overhead supply. Overhead supply insinuates that that is a bearish signal out here. But you do have a valid bottom signal. Um, if price uh, gets below that, not necessarily today, but uh, po pokes its head below that tomorrow or thereafter, that will negate that uh, signal out there. Uh, so we have that on the daily time frame. So it's, uh, it's got potential of just simply a counter trend move at this stage of the game with that new profile forming above price. If you look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame shows a Rhodes momentum indicator top, a TD9 count top, and price below profiles. Prices below profiles looks to me like what the weekly chart is communicating to us is if we get a little bit of this relief rally, that price should still resume down towards the 322.03 level. Now, there's an A to B equal CD to the downside pattern. Let's see if it was taken out with volume. The swing point was the week of August 18th. 21.6 million shares were traded. When that was passed, it was with 22 million shares. So 22 million was going up against 21.6. It was really the number was 21.9. So that's a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. If we take a look at where that, at least that first price projection level is, we'll just draw the A to B line. We'll just simply move this over to the C point out there. You can see we're below that one to one level. 
So the next bullish reversal candle that forms, should one form on a weekly basis for Netflix, that would then confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, 322.03 becomes a price target. Now, on a monthly basis, price right now is trading below red oscillator and change line. That says for the monthly time frame, it has a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions as well. So that suggests lower price. Doesn't tell us where at this stage here, although I mean, I can give you some price targets, but I'd rather just deal with what we're looking at right now on the weekly time frame, which is at 322.03 level. So we've got the potential for a counter trend move, but the longer term charts are suggesting lower price for Netflix. Coda, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. If not, let me know and I'll be happy to get that uh, for you. So let's go on to our next request out here. This would come in from Peter from Park City. And Peter wants to take a look at the euro. So let's go take a look at the euro, which has the largest impact on the U.S. dollar index. So we'll get those charts up here momentarily. We've got the monthly chart on the lower, on the upper left out there. Monthly chart shows price below a red oscillator and change line, a bearish condition. We take a look at the weekly chart, and this is the cool thing about the euro setup here, Peter, is because if we are really going to get to lower price, and I'm talking significantly lower price, when I say significantly lower price, I'm referring down to 97 cents. That's a TD9 count weekly breakout area. That becomes a target. That becomes a target if we see it close below the hammer candle from two weeks ago. That, that was bar number nine. Last week confirmed and completed a TD9 count bottom. Now, what should take place here is the euro should rally up to 1.072. If that unfolds, we should see the U.S. dollar index pull back. The target for the U.S. dollar index is the bottom of a new profile that's attempting to form, and that's at the 105.57 level out there. And it's a bearish structure that we've got that's trying to form inside the daily time frame for the U.S. dollar index. So price should run up to that 107-ish level. But if price closes below on a weekly basis, closes below that TD9 count bottom pattern, which would be 1.0448, that's the number to keep on your pad of paper. We see a close below that. That's going to suggest that we head back to its swing point area from back in September of 2022 between 95 cents and 1.0. Two out here on a daily time frame we have a TD nine count bottom price on Friday pulled back tested price this morning pulled back and tested its oscillator and change line so therefore you've got a valid bottom it has not it's held support a key level support that red line at 1.0506 and that suggests we should see a move up towards its TD nine count breakdown level so the daily and the weekly are suggesting a rally that rally should take us up towards 1.067 to 1.072. Going along with that, Peter, is that bearish structure daily profile in the U.S. dollar index, which would suggest that it wants to head lower. So all this is tying into each other. If I take a look at some of these other intraday charts out here, is there anything that sticks out to you or me? The only thing that I see that sticks out right now is on a two-hour basis. It's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count topping signal, Peter. So you want to watch that. It's going to complete that bar at 1 p.m. today. So watch the high at 1 p.m. So even though the shorter term, the, the weekly and the daily are suggesting higher price, there still might be some type of retracement here that would take place or start to take place between really now, where we're at, and 1 p.m. If that TD9 count top gets taken out on a two-hour basis, now I don't know what I know what the high is right now. I don't know if that will be the high at 1 p.m. Right now, the high is 1. 1.0555. I would watch whatever that high is, Peter, because if that gets taken out, that would then confirm that move up to the 107 to 1067 area out there. So hope that provided you with the information you were looking for on the euro. And thanks so much for your request out there. We had John inside the Tiger's Den ask me a question about the 50-day um, uh, exponential moving average and the S&P 500. And I've got a chart I was looking for, John. I couldn't find it. I'll try to find it uh, during the day, afternoon, or evening, or morning, or what have you, because I had it really laid out well that showed how the market behaved when price was above and below the 50-day exponential moving average for the spot volatility. It's not the 50-day on the S&P, the 50-day the exponential moving average on the spot volatility index. And my studies showed, now I ran this study um, many years ago, which I went through all the historical data and was able to write a program that I identified 
the uh, best exponential moving average for helping us identify when markets were bullish or bearish out there. It turned out it was the 50-day. Maybe that has changed over time. I don't even have that program. is on an older version of software, so I can't even run that as we speak right now. But I'll pull out. I'll try to find that sheet out there. But what I can share with you is based upon the work that I've done, uh, and that is this. When price is above the 50-day exponential moving average, not when it's topped out, or what have you, meaning that the S&P has formed a bottom out there, uh, we uh, that is bearish, or it gives an edge to sellers out there. And that edge right now says that sellers have the edge until price closes below that 50-day, which is currently at 1630. So um, I just wanted to make sure I touch base because it was a question that was asked. Uh, the chart, I'll again look for those charts and share those with you so you can see. But of course, everybody can do that themselves. You can create a chart. I'm sure you can put at the top the S&P 500. At the bottom, you put the spot volatilities to that, add that tool of the 50-day exponential moving average. You go take a look at price behavior, generally speaking, for the S&P 500 when the spot politics is above or below that level out there. So, Z, I'll try to find that for you. And, uh, and if I do, I'll share that with everybody inside the uh, den here and everybody that's listening in on the show. Let's go to the next request out there. Uh, let me close out these charts here for the euro. Didn't realize I still had those open. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, close out those charts. Here's what we're going to take a look at when we come back to the break. We're going to look at uh, uh, soybeans for Coda. We're going to look at the... Uh, Treasury bonds, 30 year Treasury for Fletch by the TLT. We'll also look at the 30 year AMTX and SBSW. That's the lineup. We come back to this break. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, you know, somebody in the den posted something which uh, made me now think that maybe the question that John was asking about was the Friday one-day rate of change um, in the spot volatex above plus 10 percent. Although that's not what your question was, John. So, uh, but with regard to that, and just simply that point that uh, came out here, this chart here that we're taking a look at, spot volatilics. Um, is uh, uh, I take a look at the one-day rate of change. That's a very bottom panel out there. And the chart here is identified with either blue or green arrows. When it's a blue arrow, it tells us we had a one-day rate of change above plus 10% out there, which is what took place on Friday. Now, it typically happens on the very next trading session. So that was last night. This morning, if we see a bounce or a bottom. So we've certainly seen that. But again, I'm not sure if that's really what John was asking about. I'm still going to look for that other chart out there. But since that was mentioned and we was, I was speaking about the VIX, you know, that's what we've got here uh, going. Now, typically, when that happens, we see some kind of uh, bottoming patterns in the 30 minute time frame charts for the uh, equity future contracts. That's typically been my go to time frame for that signal here. I'm going to change screens here momentarily. And actually, uh, even though it's got soybeans up, I'll pull up the uh, 30 minute charts and then we'll get back to the soybean charts but I'll pull those up here and what I would share with you is last night what we're not going to see is the typical signal so the typical signal is one that's down here in the Russell 2000 now this did not form last night this was at 2 p.m. on Friday and that's where in this case here was a TD9 count and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom uh, signal out there and that's typically the pattern that I'm looking for but as long as we're on the 30 minute time frame chart out here there's a couple things that we can take a look at as we speak right now. Now, I don't have any kind of uniformity. When I say uniformity, I mean the 30-minute charts that are in agreement with each other. For example, the ES Mini has a TD9 count top that completed at 1030. The pattern was negated immediately at 11 a.m. That suggests a strong momentum move to the upside for the ES Mini. What that would say to Stevie, what that should say to each of us, that the ES Mini wants to go target that 4430 level. That's the top of its daily profile. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, well, turns out it has a TD9 count top that is now in place. That took place as we came back on the air at 1130. Well, what's going to take place here? Price should drive its way back to support. That support level, the first level is right around 34,106. How about the NQ? The NQ is going to complete a TD9 count top at 12 noon. That suggests inside the NQ that it wants to go target that oscillator and change line down at 15 to 18. So two of them still have their TD9 counts. The Russell and two of them don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut, then sometimes you don't. Well, here the Russell 2000 negated its TD9 count top right at 1030. So following along suit with regard to the ES Mini. So which is it? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. And probably neither does anybody else out there. But what we didn't want to do, we don't have uniformity. Typically, and I'll get back to the uniformity idea here. Typically, when we get that nice bounce or bottom signal with a one-day rate of change uh, above plus 10%, it will look more like this bottom right-hand chart here for the um, – uh, for the Russell 2000. If we take a look at where price opened up last night here, let's get to where were we, right? Am I on the right? Yeah. So right here is where we had uh, price open up. This I'm looking at the ES Mini was just a gap to the upside. No bottoming pattern per se associated with that, but still price is doing what it's supposed to. But back to what it's doing right now, um, watch the NQ. It should pull back to 15,219. Of course, you want to watch um, the NQ and the uh, Dow because if those highs get taken out, and I can give you the high for the Dow, the NQ still finished up the bar following bar number nine. But if the YM begins trading on a 30-minute basis, when I say trade, I really mean closing above 34,254. That's a signal that it wants higher price as well. So those are the 30-minute charts. That was the spot volatility, uh, you know, a number of different tools uh, that, that it provides us with. And uh, those are just simply two of them. So now let's go take a look at uh, soybeans. November contract for soybeans out here. Let's go take a look at it. We're getting ready to for this to uh, roll over into the uh, uh, January 2024 contract, I believe. But if we take a look at November beans out here, two days ago, they confirmed a buy the D point pattern. 
Now, there's a TD9 countdown. The only thing about this A to B equals CD to the downside, Coda, is that this retracement, this C, this B to C retracement out here, is more than 0.786. And once it's like 80 some odd percent. But, uh, you know, I, I don't like when it violates that because it really says it's more of a consolidation. But when I look at this chart here, this is not a consolidation, not on this time frame. January 2024 may be a consolidation pattern, but not November of 2023 out here. Nonetheless, if we take a look at November of 2023, you've got a nice buy the D point bottom. Price is trading with inside its bullish structured profile. It's above the center of that profile. It should target 131098. On a weekly basis, we have a confirmed buy the D point pattern out here, Gartley buy pattern. Why? Because last week was a, a key reversal bar. A key reversal bar needs three things. You need to be in an extended condition. If you get to the one-to-one, -one, that C to D leg on that A to B equals CD, I can assure you it is in an extended condition out there. Number two, you have to exceed the prior bars high and low. In this case here, it was a weekly high and low. It did that. And number three, and most importantly, price needs to close in the opposite direction of that prior trend. Well, it's done that. That was an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, the key level of resistance inside the November bean contract out here is going to be at 1295.50. Monthly chart just shows a consolidation with inside profiles. But because you're rolling over here in the next couple of days, let's take a look at the um, January 2024 contract out here. Let's go see what kind of signals that might have. And that's really important for anybody that might want to consider trading the ETF SOYB because what's inside there are going to be three or four different future contracts. So here's January 2024. Now, in this case here right now, price is dealing with resistance. So that's the top of its daily profile. That number is important to watch is 1304.20. Two consecutive closes above that would suggest that, okay, we've got at least a change in trend for its uh, daily time frame. Here we see kind of that same pattern out there, that A to B equals CD to the downside. That retracement looks like it's more than a 0.786. Nonetheless, um, right, we're going with a confirmed buy the D point pattern. On a weekly basis, price didn't get all the way down to where it's, well, hold on a minute here. I was changing things up. Did it get there? Yeah, it did. That's close enough for our work out here. So on the January contract, you also have a confirmed Gartley buy pattern for its weekly time frame. Now, what you'd really like to see price do, was it able to do it last week, the week before, and it closed below it the week before, and that's the bottom of that weekly profile. So what you really want to see here, Coda, you really want to see a weekly close above 1304.20. If you get that, price should then run up to its oscillator and change line, currently printed at 1323 out there. And you really want to see that price get back inside that profile. Why? Because on a monthly basis, you're still below profile support out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at soybeans. I hope that that helped you out, and uh, thank you so much for the request. We'll close out these charts, and let's go to our next request out there. And that next request was to take a look at the 30-year Treasury bond, and that was from Fletch inside the Tiger's Den. Now, Fletch wants to take a look at the TLT, which we will do. But since I'm so close right now to my tab for the 30-year Treasury, that's what we're going to pick up on first. And this is really the key chart out here. In my opinion, this is the key chart. So if we take a look at the 30-year Treasury, there's all kinds kinds of A to B equals CD patterns to the downside. So the most recent one was confirmed with this bull sash candle on October the 9th. Then what did price do? See, this is a slightly bullish structured daily profile out here, Fletch. Price was below that for more than two consecutive sessions. Where do counter trend rallies end inside, the, inside anything that trades up to the center of its bullish structured profile. That's right, it was at the center. And that's what took place on October 11th. And now we're below the bottom of that profile. Not looking great, but we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
tfnn.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we're taking a look at the uh, TLT right now. We were looking at 30-year Treasury before that break. Um, Fletch, if uh, the 30-year Treasury today closes below 111.14, 111.14 is the high from October 6. That's its swing point. If it closes below that level, odds favor, price is going to go test that by the D point bottom right around 108.29 out there. With regard to the TLT, and those are the charts that you've got up on my screen here. This is really just tracking along that 30-year for the most part. But in the case of the TLT, a uh, close below 85. 70 would tell you that uh, well to expect price to go test that swing low out here that swing low from October 6th but really it's taking its P's and Q's from the 30-year uh, out here the uh, weekly chart does not have a bottoming pattern it needs a bullish reversal candle to generate a buy the D point and the monthly chart needs a bullish reversal candle to form a um, to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom so that's what I see Fletch when we take a look at the TLT and the 30-year uh, and you are most welcome Dan inside the Tigers that wants to take a look at at AMTX. So let's get back up to those charts here. Give me a moment. AMTX. And we should be able to pull that up here momentarily. And AMTX, well, this is a nice looking daily time frame chart. This formed a beautiful Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did that back on October 4th. Now what price is doing, it's trading with inside its profile. So Dan, it looks to me like what this wants to do is go target the top of that profile at 510, more likely 522. 522 is the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Again, ticker symbol here that we're looking at is e AMTX. That's a daily time frame that we just looked at. Let's uh, scrunch in this. Let's take a look at this uh, weekly time frame. What do you have here? You have a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom that formed out here the week of September 29th. That has led to what it should lead to, which is a test of its oscillator and change line. It did that last week. It's doing that this morning. That key number is 487. You'd like to see price close about 487. We're actually printed about 485 right now, but you want a weekly close above that, not a daily close above that. Should you get that, Dan, we should see some further traction to the upside 
side. That further tracks the upside. We know it would take us to 510, 522, and above 522, we'd be looking at 659 and 782. The monthly chart not really assisting us with a whole lot, although I do see a buy the D point pattern where price consolidating with inside its profile right now. It's really going to be the daily and the weekly. I'd say it's the weekly. The weekly number again is that oscillator and change line. And as we speak right now, again, that is printing out at 487. So, Dan, I hope that helped you out with regard to AMTX. I know you were also interested in SBSW. So let's go take a look at SBSW. What is that? Still Bain, whatever it is, or something, SBSW. Uh, but what we can say about SBSW is, man, it's a lot of gaps. So is this a currency? It's got to be a currency thing. Cybane, Stillwater. Yeah, so it must be. So we're not going to pay attention to gaps here. Because that's likely caused by currency. I can't guarantee you that. But here's what we know about the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame has roads momentum indicator signal, but no confirmation of a bottom. It needed a bullish reversal candle. Price is dealing with the bottom of its weekly profile. This was bullish in structure as well. That says if this does rally and continues to rally, which the daily is suggesting that it should, that uh, it's got to deal with resistance levels. Resistance levels, the first one, 614. You're at 608 right now. If you can get above 614, the next uh, resistance level will be 651. Above 651, we'd be looking at 677 out there. Your eyes on the sevens for AMTX. Okay, we're on SBSW. Now, on a monthly basis for uh, Cybane Stillwater, this is going to, should form, well, shoulda, woulda, coulda. It will confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern so long as on Friday, price closes below $6.24, 624, near 608. So you'd like to, you'd love to see a monthly uh, TD9 count bottom form, but that says that you don't get much rally here. And the daily, you know, you're trading above last Friday's high out there, you're above profile, you're above an oscillator and change line. It is looking like this wants to continue to move higher, but it's going to be about Friday that uh, you're going to be paying attention to where SBSW closes. So I hope that helps you out as well there, Dan. Next request is from Alton. Alton wants to take a look at LNG. So let's pull up the charts here for LNG. Didn't have, uh, oh, we got them up here. So I take a look at LNG. Today, liquid natural gas is, uh, is uh, giving you a sell pattern. Why? Really, on, uh, because it, right, right now what we have is a bear separating candle. And that bear sep uh, Shanera Energy, by the way, LNG, uh, that, that uh, is, a, is a bear separating line that confirms the Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. Now, what we also see out here, Alton, is a new daily profile. That new profile has resistance at 175.50. We're trading below that right now. The next area of support could be, and this is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value, between 167.29, the bottom of the profile, and that 175.50 level. And that's at 171.39. If price were to close below 171.39, it should make its way to 170.05-ish. That's its green oscillator and change line. On a weekly basis, last week is a very positive sign. Kind of suggests, let me just open up the charts further, make sure I don't overstay ah it just headed back to a prior high out here so it closed it took out a td9 count top but now what it's dealing with is the highs from back in november of 2022 and that high there was volume of 14 million shares last week you were coming into it with nine million shares so price is moving into this swing point high with lighter volume out there so alton you're also going to want to pay attention to that high out there should price continue to rally don't know that it will that's at 182.35 out here so you've got that top that it's dealing with and trading new swing point lighter volume a daily top out here and a monthly that's just a consolidation so you know to the extent that lng chenier energy is um Impacted by the direction of uh, natural gas, which it should be. This is still holding up really well. We're at our highs here for LNG. We're not anywhere near the highs with regard to natural gas. So, Alton, I hope that helped you out with regard to LNG. Thanks so much for the request. Nicholas wrote in. He wants to take a look at Boeing. BA is a ticker symbol out there. And his question specifically is, did it bottom today? So let's wait for those charts here to populate. See if we can answer that question. Well, where it bottom was really about five days or six days ago. It was on the trading day of October 6th. The October 6th bottom 
was a Rhodesman indicator bottom. That's a swing point that did volume of 5.3 million shares. On Friday, price pulled back and tested with 8 million shares. You closed inside it, said we would test it again. Well, we're testing it today. The volume so far today inside of Boeing is 1.9 million shares. 1.9 going against 5.3, a little over two hours of trading. So you're, you're pretty similar type volume to that uh, swing point. So not until price clears that swing point. So did it bottom today? It's going against that bottom back on October 6th and maybe doing it with similar kind of volume. You'd like to see it do it with light volume there. And you'd like to see price clear the swing point. In order to do that, it would need to close above 188.64. But the answer to your question, did it form a bottom today? That bottom pattern was already in place out there. Now, what today's action has done or is doing, now it hasn't done it enough. What you really want to see for Boeing to get a nice solid bottom is you want to see a spike this week or next, preferably this week. You want to see a spike below 182.55 and then right back above it. That would then trigger bar number nine of a TD9 count. And that would be nice because Boeing's pulling into its bullish structured monthly profile support area between 181.21 and 191.24 out there. So, Alton, I hope that helped you out as well. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at two symbols, two requests. We'll do it pretty quickly. Hector and Patty want to take a look at Newmont Mining, M-E-N, N-E-M is a ticker symbol. And Hector and Patty's question is about the A to B equals CD pattern. And then the next symbol we'll take a look at for Greg. He's looking for an entry point in the Valley, V-A-L-E. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the charts for Hector and Patty uh, Newmont Mining up on our screen here. And their question was, did Newmont Mining form an A to B equals CD to the upside? And my answer to that is no, it did not. If we take a look at the A point, it would be easy to identify. That would be down here at the October 4th low. Where are we going to put the B point? And Hector, you know, identified, and that's what I would do, I would do too. We picked up this uh, bar number five of this TD9 count. That's a trading session of October 12th. And if you use that for a B point, you have to use the bottom of that candle. you got to use the next low that takes place after that. That's in the same candle. Rule number 223 of Stevie's A to B equals CD rules. Don't use the same candle for both the B and the C swing point out there. The other issue that you've got, rule number 276, is uh, make sure the retracement is at least a 0 0.382 retracement. The retracement of this candle is 17%. So you got two things that really knock it out of the A to B equals CD folklore language out there. Where is Newmont Mining likely headed to? It's likely headed to its TD9 count breakdown level, and that's up at the 40, 57 area. It's likely headed to its swing point that was a TD9 count top from September 20th. The volume there was 6.7 million shares. Shoot, today you're up with over 3 million right now. So you've got nice volume. There's 15 million on Friday. On a weekly basis, Newmont Mining's got resistance at uh, forty-one dollars. Real quickly, let's get over to Val Vale out here, Valley. This is for Greg. He's looking for a entry point. Hmm. Got a consolidation on the monthly, consolidation within private profiles on the weekly basis, and then the daily time frame. Boy, I don't have any kind of bottoming signal, but what we do have is we have price trained above the top of its daily profile. As long as it remains above 1326, what it may be doing is trying to uh, set up a further move higher. That further move higher, though, 1377 is the next resistance area out there. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with Tom at about 315. And if I don't see you then or speak to you then, we'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care. Have a marvelous Monday. Be safe out there.